Uh, this thing did not just start overnight. It's something that was uh, seen and envisaged, even the focus by IMF and other organizations in 2014 really showed that this thing was going to happen. And uh, it's a build up to so many things. Build up to one, if you look at the north, the whole of northeast, there was no production for some years. Some parts of northeast, there was nothing. No, no, even farming could not go on for some years. Some places up to five years. Some places two years. So it was only towards the end of last year that people even uh, some of the. Uh, People went back to their homes and started a normal life. So it's a difficult situation. And if you look at, if you take one over six, it's not producing. It's a problem. Then the second thing we know, the, we rely solely on one mono product, uh, oil. This oil, we are not even processing it. So there are no much benefits that we get from it apart from taking it from the ground and selling it. The price went down. When we were making a lot of money from it, we never saved for the rainy day. So we were spending all what we were making. And we were not also spending, if we were spending these monies that we were making when the oil was 114 per dollar, if we were spending it on infrastructure, on manufacturing, on development, we will have been somewhere today. At least we will have been the diversified where we are going to get revenue that now that we are in a zero difficulty. But even this money that we are making, it was being stolen. So it was not going to development. I can remember I did, a, when I was doing my master's, I did a, a, my project on correlation between debt and development. When I look at it and my study showed it's correlated, but the supervisor asked me, he said, ah, but why is Nigeria that with our huge debt that time we are still not developed? I said, because our debts are not going into development, they are going into private pockets. So this is the problem we had. When we were making money, it was going into private pockets. So, and now also Koko, we did not even develop the little power. If power developed, at least manufacturing will have been booming by now. We have not been able to develop it. The roads, I, the railway, the airlines, all of them are in serious problems. They are indebted to so many banks and even indebted to staff. So these are built up that when you look at it, you know definitely we are going into a situation of crisis. And what happened? Imagine this government came up, this again, the issue of this Niger Delta came up. So there was also destruction and even the little oil that we were exporting at the low price we are not able to export. At a point, sometimes we export 1.1 million barrels per day instead of 2.2 as we budgeted. So all these things, anybody looking at it, in fact, we are even lucky that we are still surviving because there are, some countries, if this thing happened to them, they will completely collapse. So we are a great country and we are lucky that we are still surviving. But we need, there are some things that we can be able to, to do. One. We have to, all this uh, terrorism and vandalism has to stop. Because if we don't stop them, no meaningful business will go. No investor will come in, in a place of, in an insecure place. So we have to uh, put a lot more effort on security. The government has done a lot in the Northeast, but we want the government also to do much more, more in North, uh, North Central and also the South South. The South is kidnapping. So every region has its own security problem, so we need to have sought out these our security issues. Then government needs to invest a lot, especially in agriculture. Like in uh, the north is now, with all the problem of Boko Haram, people have many people have gone back to their homes, but they don't even have what to eat. So they cannot even farm because they don't even have what to eat. So definitely the government has to provide food for them, then provide implements and other farming uh, items so that they can be able to farm. If you do that this year, by next year they will be fully settled and you don't have any problem. But if you don't do it this year, that means next year again, we will still be in the same position. So government has to diversify. And government has to put a lot of money into the system. We learned the other time that about was it 400 billion was 
release. But if you release 400 billion to these big, big uh, companies, it doesn't trickle down to our local contractors. Release money for education, agriculture, uh, primary health. Because this is the money, when you release money for your bank, it goes to the grassroots. The contractors will be from the grassroots. The workers will be from the grassroots. So a lot of people will benefit from it and the money will trickle down. If you release money for agriculture, it will go to the grassroots. If you remove, uh, release money for primary health, it goes to the grassroots. So government has to balance between, yes, we need the roads and uh, 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 railway and other infrastructure, but we also need to stimulate this micro level that is so that our local people at the local levels will also see this money trickling down to them. Without it, that's why we have not, we, 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 we had the government has released 400 billion, but when you go to the village, you will not see it. I was in the village during Salla, that's why I did my Salla, but you will not see it in the village because it has not gotten to that place. It's maybe I've stopped in Abuja, the big, big contrast like Julius Bada and others have taken that money. So we need government to release money for this uh, basic infrastructure like education, agriculture and uh, primary health. Okay, sir.